Critics are saying that Alice in Wonderland is perfectly suited to the talents of Tim Burton. Well, didn't they say that about Sweeney Todd and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and almost every movie the guy's made in the last 15 or 20 years? Has it been that long since we've seen Tim Burton's first movie, Pee-wee's Big Adventure? Anyway, yes, Alice in Wonderland is perfectly suited to the dark, manic, fantastical vision of Tim Burton. But like I said before, almost every movie is. Now, of course, Alice is based on the Lewis Carroll story about the little girl who gets knocked into the hole and ends up in a new, incredible world, Wonderland, sort of like the Wizard of Oz on acid. So Tim Burton has this movie. He obviously has a big budget and sort of the same story, only this time he makes a sequel to Alice. It even alludes to an earlier Alice movie that really never was. In this case, Alice is a 19-year-old who is about to be engaged. Actually, she's offered an engagement by a member of the aristocracy. She's not all that thrilled with it, so... She goes off on her own, sees a rabbit, ends up in the hall, and wham, she's in Wonderland. In Wonderland, of course, she meets all sorts of incredible, amazing creatures. There is a monstrous dog-like creature that in desperate need of an orthodontist. There is a dormouse who likes sword fighting. There is a caterpillar who smokes a hookah and sounds and looks a little bit like Yoda, actually voiced by Alan Rickman. And of course, there is the Mad Hatter, played by Johnny Depp in this case. He sort of looks like high energy um, prop comic carrot top on a bender. And sometimes he sounds like Fat Bastard from the Austin Powers movie. Now, is she imagining all this or not? Well, we're really not quite sure until the end of the film. Alice, the story was very anecdotal, and this movie is too, up to a certain point, where they have to sort of get to the backstory. And in this case, it's a feud between the two queens of Wonderland. One is the White Queen, played by Anne Hathaway, and the other one is the Red Queen, played by Helena Bonham Carter, uh, a.k.a. Tim Burton's partner. Uh, and she really is the best part of the film. Uh, she sort of looks like a amazingly over-exaggerated version of herself with a very high forehead, kind of a forehead that reminded me of character actor Clint Howard, of all people. But she's really terrific, and she gets sort of all the best lines. Gee, I wonder why. Uh, so Alice has some incredible uh, sights and sounds and glorious special effects, as you would expect from Tim Burton and an expensive movie. But I have to say, in all, I was disappointed with Alice. The last part of this film reminds me of one of those Chronicles of Narnia films. There's a big battle that involves all these different creatures. Uh, people's sides keep changing. And I really didn't care what happened to Alice, to tell you the truth. I think we should have had more of an emotional connection to this character. It's an uneasy blending of whimsy Burton's dark and quirky worldview, and a conventional kid's fantasy. Overall, this is a disappointment. In 3D, uh, there's some depth that's added to it, but it's not coming at you 3D, which is okay. So this is more like Alice in Wonderland, wandering for different themes, uh, different characters, than Alice in Wonderland. And it's rated PG. I have to say, there are some pretty scary moments in it, and it's just not that funny or as witty as it should be. For Raw Reviews, I'm Movie Earth.